What's up, everybody? I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. This is another one of our Lessons from Beyond the Grave, where we take a look at some clips from my stream where I died, and we break down what went wrong and what I could do better next time. And in this video, we're talking about a mistake I make often that almost always gets me killed, and how we're trying to break that down and kind of remove that habit. Um, I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say, hey. Uh, and if you like the video, think about dropping a like or subscribing for more content like this. Subscribing really helps me out as a creator. So thank you so much to those that do that. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the way we do these is we'll watch the clip in its entirety, and then we'll go back and kind of break down what happened, what went wrong, and what we can do better next time. So let's go ahead and roll the clip. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking second. GG's. So that was a fun fight. And I think if we could boil that down to, to one or two things, it would be, um, you know, hesitation and indecisiveness that really got us there. Um, so at the very beginning, the indecisiveness and the hesitation comes from the fact that the audio around the three story dorms or both of the dorms and customs is a little buggy. And this is one of the things that can be incredibly frustrating because if you want to be confident, if you want to make a decision, a lot of times you make that decision based on the information that you have. And I'm hearing people, but I'm not sure if they're second or third, because sometimes it can sound like they're even on the same floor as you, but they're actually two floors up. So we're kind of slowly making our way up, but I want to get in this fight, right? So I could just slow creep around the entire place until they, you know, I catch them off guard um there was a fight going on in here which was why i pushed so i know that potentially they could be looting or metting but i wanted to take the fight so i wanted to push up and see what happens as i run up the stairs you do hear the med animation one of them starts healing you hear the bandage but i didn't push into that quite fast enough like i could have taken that um, as a way to just push right up and go for the kill immediately um, so at the very end, you, we hear him pull his gun up. We hear somebody click, check their fire rate. They know I'm here. I know they're there. Let's make something happen. Now the tactical, uh, devices like the flashlights and stuff like that haven't, don't get used too often. And in the past, there was a bug where the flashlights would actually illuminate your screen so you could see better, but they wouldn't, uh, blind other people. The other people, even your own teammates just wouldn't see the flashlight. Well, that's since been fixed. And this was a cool, um, use case for that because as i rounded this corner you can see that there's two of them here and they're both literally waiting for me they're standing still they're waiting for me they hear me and i was able to blind them both just enough to just get some shots off and take cover again right uh, i'm aiming a little low for sure for headshots you know what i mean if i was aiming since i knew they were here if i was aiming higher the next the shots that i do hit some of them could have potentially been headshots and i could have potentially eliminated one if not both of them with my spray we were aiming low the flashlight saved us we get some shots off and you actually see both of them get aim punched which saved me again my first shots hit this guy his gun goes up my second shots hit this guy his gun goes up so that helps and we're able to back off now this is when this moment right here is oftentimes where my decision making breaks down. If a fight doesn't immediately end, um, then I, you know, I start to get tense and start not knowing what to do. I could have repeaked these guys, but because I knew I hit them both, but both most likely because there was two of them, I'm gonna die. So I run up and I want to toss a nade down there to see in case they're pushing me because they've got the two v one, they could potentially push me. Now, I had the idea to potentially go out on the balcony, come down, and come right behind him. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that. Flanks like that 
oftentimes I have the idea really quickly and I rarely execute on them. And if I do execute on them, I execute like this where it's super late and I've given them time to make their decision. Um, and that's always a fear of them hearing me. I think audio is my driving force of me hearing where they are and then making decisions based on that. And it's also my biggest downfall of assuming that um, A, a player will hear and know just because he hears me, he knows exactly where I am and B, that he'll react accordingly and do some crazy play that I've never heard of or, or I've never seen. So I'm always scared that if they hear me, that it's just game over and I'm just going to die. But when I have... Uh, which is weird because experience actually tells me the opposite. When I have made plays, when I have made really quick, really decisive flanks, they oftentimes work out in my favor. But I wasn't sure what to do. I wanted to wait for a push. Well, do I just want to wait up here for a push the whole time? No, let's go try and flank again. Um, you know what I mean? We start hearing shots outside. Back here, I hear him hit like an ibuprofen or something or some sort of pain med right there he's swallowing a pill so he's getting ready for another fight and all this time that i'm up here because i'm moving slowly i am giving them time to hear what i'm doing and react to it and what we end up seeing is that the guy runs to the complete other end of the hall which was good for him we start hearing shots in the other dorms or some other places around so i don't want to be out on this balcony for too long if i had made a really 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 quick flank like an immediately done this exact flank that I did. The flashbang here would have been pretty nice. I knew I had a flash and I knew that there were two of them. And the precedent was the last time I peeked an angle, they were holding it. So this was an opportunity for me to take ownership of the angle. If they were still standing in that same spot, they were either going to have to get behind cover or they're going to be completely blinded by, by this flash. But that didn't work as an idea because I gave them time to reposition. So now this guy, I don't know where the other guy is, but this guy's all the way at the other end of the hall, not really affected by my flash. So he can keep that angle that he was holding. He was maybe expecting me to re-peek and put my back to him, but I came all the way down here. And in my first, because I'm assuming they're close, once again, I had an idea. I delayed the execution of that idea. And then when I did execute the idea, I was assuming they would still be where they were, which wasn't good because they had plenty of time to relocate, relocate which he did. So I peek the angle once, assuming that they're going to be in the similar spot. I peek it again because VLC is being a little weird. I peek it once. I peek it again because I do think I see somebody. And then right here, uh, this is another thing that I do a lot that uh, I shouldn't do, is if you peek an angle once really quickly and you think you see someone and then you peek it again to confirm somebody's there, me deciding to take the shot on this guy was a terrible idea because he's had more time than I have to line up a shot. Um, the very first time that I peeked the angle, he wasn't wondering if he saw me. He knew he saw me. So now he can line up head height, wait for me to peek again. I do peek again, and I'm like, oh, let me try and take a shot. And as soon as I open fire, he head taps me. So not to mention the fact that I'm most likely silhouetting um, really bad because I'm standing with the sun at my back outside, uh, kind of like he is at the other end there. Um, we're basically both doing the same thing, but he had more time. I look exactly like that to him. The sun's at my back. It's just a silhouette. He can see my head and easy, easy tap me. So I think this was a cool fight. I was uh, one of the things that I um, have been proud of as I progress as a player is not just immediately dying. A lot of times I would have just immediately died. I would have wouldn't have hit my flashlight. I would have probably repeaked this angle again. So we made it through this first encounter and we had a good idea but at the end of the day you have to execute on that good idea i think if there's one takeaway from the video if you're if you like videos like this the lessons from beyond the grave and you're trying to hone and sharpen your skills if there's one thing is that i died here and i didn't i'm able to learn from it which is good but i didn't get as much um, out of this fight as i could have i died anyway so if i'm gonna die to hesitation all the time i'd rather die to confident plays and just learn that that maybe wasn't the best play there uh, because at the end of the day i can't really say if that idea would have worked or wouldn't have worked because i didn't give myself an opportunity to know so now if i get in this exact same position again i might try that same play again but might realize that that actually wasn't a good play so at the end of the day 
hesitation doesn't do a whole lot for you other than being able to watch clips back and say, I hesitated. So I think if you're trying to get better at PvP, if you're trying to get better at fights and escape from Tarkov, um, when you have an idea, go with your gut, go really, really quickly with it and just make that play. You might die. I feel like you have less of a chance of dying than if you hesitate and uh, you are probably going to make some really cool plays half the time. And then the other half the time, you're going to just learn and say, OK, this type of push wasn't a good idea. There were two of them that might work if there was one and you can kind of break it down from there. But the hesitation doesn't do a whole lot for you, and it almost always ends in you dying. And for me, if you wanted to just kind of rat it up and, and hide in a room and just not move at all and completely wait for them to just push you, you could do that. And that would really technically be a viable strategy. But I'm in that in-between where I want to be a more aggressive player. I'm trying to learn how to sharpen my skills as a PvPer. So when I hesitate, I end up in the middle. I end up not making aggressive plays, not making quick plays, but not ratting it up. And I just end up moving around a lot, giving them a lot of audio to know where I am and then end up getting killed. So that was this. Don't hesitate. Make a move. Make it quick. Learn from it. So I hope that this helped. I hope that uh, videos like these really do help break down, um, help you break down your gameplay. I'm a huge proponent of being able to watch it back and break down your mistakes um, is a great way to get better. It is single-handedly the best way that I have found to sharpen my skills and hone them. And it's not about like you can watch something once and then apply it. It takes a while to kind of bake that into your subconscious. But hopefully videos like this um, help provide constructive criticism around fighting and how to get better at PvP and Escape from Tarkov. Thank you all so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. If you liked the video, think about giving it a like or subscribe for more content like this. I'm always trying to make videos that help shorten the learning curve of Tarkov and get you into raids having fun as soon as possible. Like I said before, I do stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. And we also have a Discord with like 2,500 people, uh, veterans, new players, people that will answer questions, help with quests, run raids with you. Uh, it's an awesome place to be, so definitely check that out. That link is down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will see you all on the next one.